Good morning, beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make travel vlogs, how to's, and general encouragement for you to get out and to do the thing. And I'm currently in the middle of an 8,000 mile loop of the United States that I have dubbed Flight of the Magpie. If you have missed any of those episodes, I will link the playlist above my head. And yesterday, I made it to the East Coast. I saw the Atlantic Ocean. It was kind of a big deal. <laughs> Anyway, I ended up in Kill Devil Hills last night about 7 p.m. I found a hotel room because the four campgrounds that I stopped to check in were totally reserved and booked up. I'm kind of having a feeling if you want to camp on the East Coast, you have to book like a month in advance. Not something that I'm used to, but I also don't know how much of that has been affected by COVID. And uh, <laughs> based on my experience just in the Midwest, I'm having a feeling that it's probably easier to get camping when there isn't a pandemic happening, so <laughs> it might take me another couple years to get back out here, but I will definitely get back out here on the bike. Um, I'm still trying to process how far I've come on the bikes. Like, it's, it's hard to wrap my head around right now. I'm currently at the Wright Brothers Memorial because it was so close to where I stayed last night. So I'm gonna walk around here, and then my next goal for today is to go to the Lost Colony site of Roanoke. I think that's what it is. And then from there, my next goal is Asheville so I can go see Carl because Carl recently moved clear across the United States with his wonderful fiance. And I want to see them again while I'm over here because I probably won't see him again for quite a while. And then I think from Asheville, the next place is Atlanta and then Colorado and then home. I have like, I only have about a week, a little bit over a week left of this trip and <laughs> I need to do in eight days what it took me 11 to do. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful memorial, head over to the Roanoke colony site, and then haul ass, essentially. <laughs> So I am at the Raleigh National Historic Site. For those of you who are not familiar with the story of the Lost Colony of Roanoke Island, I will give you the Spark Notes version. I will also link down in the description a couple of videos about the Roanoke Colony that could probably go into better detail than I can. But for the sake of this video, in 1584, Sir Walter Raleigh financed expeditions to Roanoke Island, North Carolina. There were three parties of colonists that set up shop here on the island. The first two colonies set up shop and then they went back to England. The third set of colonists was 117 men, women, and children to set up the city of Raleigh. And they were led by a man named John White. Well, John White went back to England to get supplies for the colonists. Well, thanks to England and Spain fighting a whole lot, uh, John White did not get back to his colonists until 1590, three years later, to find that there was nobody here. They were gone. Now before John White left, they promised that if they were going to go somewhere, they would leave it marked some someplace so that he would know where they went. So the only mark of or hint of where these colonists went was uh, two words, crow towen and crow written into a tree. Now, if you're like me, you're like, well, they did it. They told you where they were going because there is an island about 50 miles south of here where the neighboring tribe of Croatoan people were. So I'm like, yeah, they told you where they were going. They went to the island and there have been excavations there like with colonist stuff that would have dated back to the 1580s. So that, you know, you know that makes sense to me. But the official story is that they were never seen or heard from again. I've always thought this story was so fascinating, so I wanted to come and see here. I was kind of hoping a little bit that they would like have some like reconstructed ideas of what the settlers like little village would have looked like, but there's not. <laughs> anyway guys, 
Um, I will definitely, I'll leave links to articles and other videos that kind of go into more detail about the history of this site, which I just think is super cool. <laughs> Amanda's shorthand account <laughs> of the city of Raleigh. <laughs> okay, um, I think we'll go, we'll go back to the bike and hit the road. <laughs> Traveling through the south at night is so much more enjoyable. <laughs> Two, I am almost to Carl's house and I'm so excited. I think that I've done like 400 and something miles today. I'll put it on the screen here so that you can see it's been a long day. I've been on the road for quite a while. I'm very excited to get to his house. I'm excited to get to do laundry. Oh, and say hello to his puppies. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. I made it safe and sound to Carl and Lillian's house last night, and they stayed up with me, made me food, and oh, it was just so nice. Um, if you do not know who Carl is, he did the cabder with me, so I'll link that series above my head so you can just get a little refresher of who Carl is. They've just been so wonderful and welcomed me into their home, and oh my goodness, it was so nice to sleep on a real bed and not a hotel bed. And Lillian reminded me that Blue Ridge Parkway is very conveniently very close to their house. So I get to ride Blue Ridge Parkway today. I think I'm gonna go over so I can see the Great Smoky National Park, then back to the Blue Ridge Parkway and ride that to Atlanta. And I get to stay with Doodle tonight and I'm very excited about that too. Um, so this is just like worked out perfectly. There was a bit of fog this morning, but it has cleared out and it is gorgeous now. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm glad that it, this has worked out and that I'm still gonna get to ride a part of the Blue Ridge Parkway. I was a little bummed earlier when I passed it, I passed the north entrance on the way to the Outer Banks. And as you probably heard me say already, I thought that I wasn't going to be able to do it because it was pouring and foggy and just gross. And I really wanted to enjoy it. So seeing the weather has opened up and is gorgeous, and knowing that I have a beautiful ride ahead of me today, and there's like barely 200 and some miles between me and Doodle's house. I also got a little clip of Carl getting ready for work this morning on his Triumph Scrambler, because I don't know how many of you follow him on his social media and saw that he sold his Tiger and got the Triumph Scrambler 1200. <laughs> it's just, it's still kind of a trip to me to see him on the scrambler instead of his trusty old tiger. But his tiger also found a wonderful, good home. Ah, <sighs> and he loves his scrambler, so that's good. <laughs> a couple of my coworkers were able to take two of my shifts, um, so I do have two extra days to get back to Portland. And in the grand scheme of things, two days doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it feels like a giant weight has been lifted off of my chest. Still on a crunch, but definitely, definitely relieved. <laughs> okay, pack up the bike, get on the road. <laughs> Guys! 
I am on Blue Ridge Parkway. I'm on my way to the Smoky Mountain National Park. I am just so excited right now. It is a beautiful day. The temperature is amazing. Once I got out of that valley and up into the Smoky Mountains, <sighs> like this is, God, I've been missing this so much and I didn't realize how much I was missing being at a higher altitude in curvy mountain roads until, until last night when I kind of saw the silhouette of the hills in the dark on the way to Carl's house and I was just like thrilled. So this is amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this. <laughs> I hope that you guys like this video. Make sure you do hit that like and subscribe button if you did. If you are new here and you haven't caught other episodes in this series so far, I will link a playlist above my head that you should definitely go check out. If you like these kind of videos and would like to support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these ad-free before the rest of the world over on my Patreon. Links to those are down in the description. If that is not up your alley, that is totally okay. I have stickers, t-shirts, prints, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them and my Redbubble shops. Links to that is also down in the description. If you cannot support me monetarily right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here and watching these videos every single week. In the meantime, guys, I'll see you later. Not only did she buy me food, and now she's making me fried cheese things, and I'm just gonna live here from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Not me and I need to talk to you about breakfast. Oh, okay. We got waffles for you. Oh, it's like the best thing ever. <laughs> waffles? Oh, my God.
my god. <laughs> Syrup. So that you can literally have as much as you want because we're hippies, we don't eat this shit. This is for you. <laughs> oh my god. You, you especially bought frozen waffles for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, if I forgot to mention it, there's still sand from the Atlantic Ocean in my boots. <laughs> <laughs> How quintessentially YouTuber am I with freaking six cameras? Also, shout out to Tripped. They make these amazing uh, packing cubes and I just love them. Um, the small, medium ones, I'm like this one. I use this one for my underwear. I put my pants in one and I put my shirts in the other and they have been holding up to my abuse beautifully. They're compressible um, by these like really nice durable zippers. I have had zero issues with the zippers splitting unlike my other cheapy no-name packing cubes that we just like will not talk about. Trip is also a channel here on YouTube. They do travel vlogs. They're not a specifically motorcycle channel, but they do have motorcycle content. Tim did a tour around the Himalayans, um, which I will link above my head because I really enjoyed that series. But they also have RV content. They have van life content. They just have like regular like backpacking abroad content. And I love them, Tim and Finn, um, great people. So yeah, I'm gonna finish folding clothes now. <laughs>